The Economist. Donald Trump has become the surprise Republican frontrunner early on in the 2016 US presidential cycle. His popularity and his fame is reflected in the wide media coverage he's been enjoying. His policies, such as they are, have had less attention. David Rennie, our Lexington columnist, interviewed Mr. Trump for a cover story in this week's edition and pressed him on what it is he stands for. Here's the recording of that conversation, beginning with Mr. Trump on what it is his supporters are looking for. Well, I think more than anything else, they want to see us uh, become great again. It's my theme. My whole theme is Mm -hmm. make America great again. And it's a concept of, of... greatness for this country. They're tired of being ripped off by every single country that does business with us, whether it's China, Japan, Mexico, Vietnam, which is in there big and heavy right now, Japan with the cars and, mm-hmm. and you know, the one-way street. They're tired of, of looking at what happens. They're tired of us having our, uh, you know, our, 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 let's say, finest and brightest uh, not being involved in the most important decisions and, and being someplace else. They want to see great trade deals. They want to see a strong military. They want to see reduced debt because we're you know at a point where we're going to be soon at $19 trillion and they just, you know, they can't stand seeing it. They want to see our veterans taken care of because they're not. They're being absolutely mistreated. There are many things they want to see. There are many points of anger in this country. What, 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 what uh, did, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So, go ahead. I mean, one interesting question is people say they're really sick of today's politicians. Uh, they think right. they're corrupt. Do you, but, I mean, if you look at the history books, politicians have been corrupt before. So the anger seems to be kind of new, uh, yet politicians... I mean, are politicians so much worse and so much more corrupt now? Or is it that politicians aren't giving Americans what they really want. What they really want is that sense of kind of post-war prosperity and growth and when America was kind of competing in the world. Well, they're, they're, they're looking at the politicians as being all talk, no action. They talk the big game and then they go to Washington and they, they look at the magnificent hallowed, hallowed halls, as you would say, or the beautiful vaulted ceilings and they say, darling, I've arrived to their loved one or their wife. Mm-hmm. They say, darling, I've arrived and all of a sudden they become nothing. They become nothingness. And they don't do the job that they got elected to do. And it happens time and time again. And people are tired of seeing politicians as all talk and no action. They just don't get it done. They're tired of being out negotiated on every front, can whether I, it's I... militarily, with ISIS, where mm-hmm. we can't stop an ISIS, uh, where we you know, have 2,300 Humvees, the latest and the greatest, mm-hmm. armor-plated, stolen because one bullet is shot in the air and the Allies run and the enemy takes over our weapons, including 2,300 Humvees, which is incredible when you think of the number of them, right? I thought there must be a mistake. It's 2,300. I'd, I'd love uh, to... I, can, I, can I just... Because you say yes, so many... You, yeah. ju- you just said Feel a bunch... Free. You, you just said a bunch of interesting things, and I wanted to just pick them one by one, if I may. So on trade negotiations, you know, the kind of pessimistic view is, look, the reason that trade deals go differently nowadays is because, you know, you go back 30 years, the Chinese, you know, hadn't really begun producing goods in a kind of global, uh, in a globally competitive manner. Now, you know, they're, they're just much, much more competitive. America faces more competition, and America doesn't have as much leverage as it used to. Now, I think you're arguing that, America has more leverage than politicians are willing to use. Is it that they're incompetent? Is it that they're cowardly? What, what is our is leverage? That, what is your leverage in trade negotiations right. in kind of concrete terms that's not being used? Right. We have the cards, uh, and I'll go into that in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have politicians that are grossly incompetent. Mm-hmm. We have leaders that are incompetent, and we have negotiators that are incompetent. You notice I have Carl Icahn ready, mm-hmm. ready to go out and, and do battle. And I have many others that are great negotiators ready to go out and do battle in our, on our behalf. And by the way, we'll get along better with these countries in the end than we get along with them now. We, don't, we have, as in the case of China and so many others, mm-hmm. they don't even like us, and yet they're eating our lunch in trade. So with China, mm-hmm. they, their primary weapon in China is what they've done with the devaluation of their currency. Okay, And in the trade pact you know, that was mm-hmm. recently agreed to, uh, I said, you have to talk about devaluation, because that's, their, that's, uh, that's been their single 
greatest asset in terms of what they're doing to us. And even just a week ago, they devalued it, the biggest devaluation they've had in two decades. Two decades. It's a long time. And nobody thought they were going to devalue again because of the fact that, you know, just nobody thought it was because they've been playing the, the devaluation game for a long but time. But can I, can, I, can I just without, ask you on – sorry. Yeah, without us, they would – we rebuilt China. Mm-hmm. We rebuilt other places, but we rebuilt China. The money they took out of the United States – is the greatest theft in the history of our country. The money they've taken out, the jobs they've taken out, the base, the, the, you know, the whole thing. They've taken so much out of our country, and they've rebuilt China. Now, China has other problems, mm-hmm. but the devaluation has allowed them to make it impossible for us to compete. Now, can, I, can, I just very, can I just, sorry, very briefly to ask you on China, I mean, the counter-argument from all the big CEOs that, you know, they're friends of yours, would be, well, you know, look at the other, look at last week when Apple's stock was getting hammered because we had the Wall Street panic triggered by the Chinese panic. How did uh, the CEO of Apple end that panic? He sent an email to the to the to MSNBC to CNBC and said, "No, no, our sales are doing great. We're still selling lots of stuff in China, and that was enough to make people, you know, sixty six billion dollars of value return to the stock uh, to the stock valuation sure. of of Apple. So doesn't that show you that actually the Chinese? Sure. I mean, how would, how see, do you cope like with that kind of leverage? Apple's built in the United States, not built in China. How do you I'd achieve like that? See, what would I'd you like say to, to the CEO of Apple? Uh, Sure, I'd like to see them have factories in the United States, at least partially. You know, we have, mm-hmm. they make nothing in the United States virtually. I would like to see with Japan, the other two weeks ago I was at a, uh, in Los Angeles, I saw the biggest ships you've ever seen mm-hmm. with cars pouring off from Japan, okay, into Los Angeles, mm-hmm. just pouring off these ships. And I'm saying to myself, we send them beef. Mm-hmm. It's a tiny fraction. And by the way, they don't even want it. You know, they have to mm-hmm. fight in order to take it in, because they don't even want it. And mm-hmm. it's very perishable. They'll send it back. They'll find reasons not to take mm-hmm. it. And yet the, the ships, the boats, are, the ships are loaded up with cars, mm-hmm. thousands of, of cars, and, and they're just pouring off. And I say, isn't that a shame? It's so one-sided. You know, it's just all. Now you look at Mexico, you know, many, many mm-hmm. factories and many plants. Nabisco's now moving to Mexico, mm-hmm. their big Chicago plant. Um, you look at Ford is building one of their biggest factories in Mexico, one of their biggest assembly plants in Mexico. Mm-hmm. They're doing two and a half billion dollar plant. That, by the way, is a major plant, two and a half yeah. billion dollars. They're doing a two and a half billion dollar plant. A, a plant, an auto, uh, a, a, another foreign company was going to build a plant mm-hmm. in Tennessee. And they're now, as you know, going to Mexico. It yeah. was a big shock right at the end. It was all set to be signed. And sure. they said right at the last moment we're going to Mexico. Can, can I, can so I ask Mexico's you, not only beating us at the border, they're mm-hmm. beating us at trade. Can I ask you just about just quickly to finish on this trade thing? So take the example of Apple maybe could do a bit more production or any production here in the States. You've talked in the past sort of very interestingly about what you would say to the boss of Ford. What would you say to the boss of a company like Apple you know, how do you, how do you persuade him to do more production? What if he turns around to you and goes, "Look, China is my best market. That's the market that uh, the analysts are looking at to see if my company's worth any money." What what do you say to the CEO okay. of Apple? So I have a friend who's a great manufacturer, and he deals with China. He deals with many countries, mm-hmm. but he deals with China all the time. He said it is impossible. It is so hard to do business in there. It's so hard to get my goods into China. Mm-hmm. And he makes a great product. Okay, it doesn't matter. I don't want to mm-hmm. embarrass him, but he makes a great product. He said, it's so hard to get our goods into China. And when we do get it, they charge us a huge surtax. They Mm -hmm. call it a surtax or Mm -hmm. tariff. Uh, I call it a tax, okay? Yeah. But when we do get it, and and the number he gave was so high that it almost seemed ridiculous. It was over 40%, Mm -hmm. 40. Uh, And he said, these people are absolutely killing us because they send their stuff tax-free, no problem, don't worry about it. But if we want to do business over there, and look at Boeing, where they took all of their copyrights and, mm-hmm. and all of their patents, and, you know, in order to buy planes, they said, yeah, but we want, because they're going to make their own factories now. Mm-hmm. You know, they're building them now. Mm-hmm. They're going to build their own planes. But they took every, now, they, even if Boeing didn't give it, they would have copied it, because, you know, they've been very So you, 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 you'd, you'd put tar- tariffs potentially on Chinese goods? That was, that'd be one of the no, things you'd say to Chinese? No, look, uh, here's, here's what I would do. I would tell them, you have devalued your currency yet again. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. The value of that is the equivalent of a 7% tax or a 12% tax. Mm-hmm. Because of the fact that you've done that, we're going to charge you 12% coming in. 
Right. And you know what? Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to stop playing games with us. Look, they've taken our jobs, they've taken our money, and on mm-hmm. top of that, they loan the money to us, and we, we actually pay them interest now on money. You know, we owe China and Japan each mm-hmm. $1.4 trillion. But Same you'd be willing to make that threat of a, of a 7% oh, I would, surtax? I would, it wouldn't be a threat. It would mm-hmm. be beyond a threat. And if they continue to do, because they're killing us. Look, if you look at, at Caterpillar now with what's going on, you know, mm-hmm. Avi is a great leader. Who's our chief negotiator? Essentially, it's, Jar- it's Carolyn Kennedy. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> Okay. Can, can I ask? She, she didn't. She doesn't know she's alive. Do, do you? Do you? Carolyn, sorry. Yeah, it's Carolyn Kennedy. So Caterpillar's having a hard time selling because mm-hmm. Komatsu is undercutting them. Uh, Japan is doing a big number on the yen, devaluing it, and it's very. And uh, I, you know, I don't know if you've heard me say this story, but a friend of mine is an excavator. He's, he owns a big excavation mm-hmm. company. And he buys a lot of, uh, you know, excavators, earth moving equipment. Yeah. And for the first time in his life, he bought Komatsu. He said Caterpillar can't compete because they've so killed the yen yeah. that I had, and he feels very unhappy about it. Mm-hmm. It's a nice machine, but it's not a, probably as good, but it's pretty close. And he said, I bought Komatsu tractors because nobody could compete with the price because of the fact that, you know, Caterpillar, because of the dollar, has nothing to do with the machinery. It's just that they've mm-hmm. devalued the yen to such an extent that he said they can't, he can't compete. And so he ended up buying Komatsu, and he's very unhappy about it. If if these things can be done, that's if, happening. If you by can, the way, David, that's happening more and more. If these things can be done, if you can have these tough conversations and 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 change the kind of terms of trade, why haven't today's politicians of both parties done it? What what are they fail? Why are they not? They're doing? grossly incompetent. And do you do you and like they're not negotiators? Do you like? And they're, and they're grossly incompetent. And I have friends from China. By the way, I love China. I mm-hmm. love Japan. I have people that buy my apartments. I have people that work for me from mm-hmm. China. I love Mexico. Yeah. I mean, Mexico. I have thousands of people from Mexico mm-hmm. that work for me. Thousands. What? Hispanics. In fact, a poll just came out. A public policy polling mm-hmm. where I'm leading with Hispanics. Can you believe that after what you've been hearing? Yeah. I'm leading. I'm number one. Do you, with do, you, do you like the label um, economic nationalist? Is that, a, is that a proud label? Would you like that? Some people use that no, around I, you. I don't think so because it sounds too harsh. I just want to be fair. I want to mm-hmm. be a fair trader. I want to be a firm and fair trader. We're being taken advantage of because we have leaders who are incompetent. They don't mm-hmm. even know. When I, when I went out and told them three months ago, that, you know, in their trade deal, they didn't even discuss, mm-hmm. uh, as you know, uh, you know, the devaluation. They didn't even discuss it. At least they started discussing it only because of me. They right. didn't even have it as as part of their deal. I don't think they still do, mm-hmm. but at least it got discussed. And a group came to me, a very important group. They said, could we do a commercial? They actually did a commercial where they mm-hmm. actually paid for it, talking about, you know, what I was saying about trade, because... You know what I'm talking about. You know, I did a commercial yeah, yeah, four yeah. months ago for them. I, I was the voice of the commercial. They did, asked me what I do, and I said, I'd gladly do it. They didn't even want my money. They wanted they had all the money. They wanted to go out and... And I talked about the devaluation was the primary point of the commercial, mm-hmm. that the, the trade deal was no good, number one. Yeah. No good for us. It's good for them. Yeah. So what happens is uh, we have tremendous strength because they want to take our money. We have the money. Mm-hmm. We have the market. They want to take this from us. And because of that, we have tremendous power. The mm-hmm. problem is we have leaders and negotiators that don't realize we have the power, and they're essentially incompetent. Mm-hmm. And we would be able to straighten out that thing. China only did the biggest devaluation in 20 years, only for one reason, because they could get away with it. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that's pointing to a bigger problem that the other Republicans have, that they're very good at, I mean, I guess you could call it unpopular populism. They're very good at the populist attacks on Barack Obama, but then if you – so they get people very fired up about Washington's broken, Washington doesn't look out for the middle class. But then when you look at their policies, it's kind of the same old, same old, kind of whatever the Chamber of Commerce tells them to do. Right. Is that, is well, that what you think you're tapping into? I can tell you some of the people into? I'm running against don't have a clue as to uh, – we're talking now, Republicans – as to mm-hmm. what to do about, about what we're talking about, devaluations. And I do. I mean, that's what I do. I'm really good at this stuff. Mm-hmm. I will make great deals with China, and they'll like us more than they do now. You know, they don't even like, you know, in Business Week magazine, mm-hmm. they did a story uh, a while ago about what are the th- what are the things, the ten things that the Chinese most want. One of the mm-hmm. ten things was anything Trump. Right. And I thought about that, yeah. and they respect me. They, they have to respect you. China does not respect us, and they don't, do not respect our leaders. Would, I've done great in China. What would President and Trump do about um, the Chinese building reefs and air bases in the South China Sea? 
Well, I don't like it. It's very far away. I do not like it. Uh, it's very hostile. It's a hostile move. And I would be talking to them very seriously about it. However, it's very far away, and we have a lot of problems, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're already built. Uh, and, you know, to be honest with you, I think Japan and other people are going to have to start talking about things like that. I'll give you another example, the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Russia's fighting in the Ukraine, and we're right out front. Okay, mm -hmm. We're right out front, and we're sending brand new F-22 fighters, the latest and the greatest, and mm -hmm. everything else. And here's Germany that's making a fortune in all of these European countries who truly have a much bigger impact and, and effect than we do, by, you know, affected greater, mm -hmm. far greater than we are. And then you sit back and watch us uh, go out there and put our heads on the line. Mm -hmm. Another thing is South Korea. I mean, I just ordered 4,000 television sets from South Korea, you know. Mm -hmm. They're only made in South Korea, other than Sony, you know, at yeah. Samsung, yeah, yeah. LG, uh, Sharp. They're yeah. all South Korea. So I'm negotiating. I made a deal. I made a good deal. That's fine. Mm -hmm. you know, but I ordered 4,000. There's no televisions made in the United States. So I'm, I'm ordering 4,000 television sets from South Korea. Mm -hmm. And yet they're making a fortune as a country. You know, you look at the balance. Mm -hmm. You look at the, the deficit yeah. we have with all these countries I'm talking We have deficits with everybody. Mm -hmm. we, we, who do we have a positive? We have deficits with everybody. So I order these all of these sets. And I'm thinking to myself, isn't this ridiculous? Now, when... that. We don't even make televisions here. Now, when North Korea rears its head, mm -hmm. we send our ships, we send our planes, we get ready. We got our 28,000 soldiers on the border. That's a seriously dangerous border, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've got their million and a half man army. We've got 28,000 soldiers, right? Yeah. But, but here we are doing this, protecting, and I'm saying to myself, we don't even get any. We don't get money. We don't get anything for doing this. And I'm sure you're right that a lot of, I mean, a lot of American presidents have been very frustrated with, you know, wimpy Europeans or, you know, free riding Japanese. But what if, at the end By of the way, day, I don't mind. I don't mind being at their side mm -hmm. with respect to the Ukraine. But what but if why what should if, we always be out in front? How how many times can we be out in front mm -hmm. of these issues? You know, we, you just mentioned we just mentioned four of them in, yeah. in the sake of yeah. a minute yeah. and a half. You mentioned South China Sea. Yeah. We mentioned uh, North Korea, South Korea. Mm -hmm. We mentioned Ukraine. We can mention five others. You know, Yemen and this sure, and that. Sure. How many places can we do this? With? But what what if you know, we, what we if, have a country that's we have a country that's a debtor nation. Mm -hmm. We have an infrastructure that's crumbling all over the place. Sixty mm -hmm. percent of the bridges we have in this country are in trouble. Yeah. But what you about know? what about I totally hear your frustration and I'm sure that a lot of Americans share it. But what if it turns out that even after you tell the Japanese or the Europeans you need to step up and not expect us to carry the can? What if they don't? And then as president, you're facing, well, if we pull back and we're not the world's policemen, China, Russia, you know, they'll start to just bully their neighbors. I mean, what if frustrating though if it is? Step, if, if we step back, they will protect themselves, themselves very well. Remember when China, you know, Japan used to beat China routinely mm -hmm. in wars. You know that, right? Japan used to beat China. I mean, they routinely beat China. Uh, why are we defending? You know, the, the pact we have with Japan is interesting because mm -hmm. if somebody attacks us, Japan does not have to help. Mm -hmm. If somebody attacks Japan, we have to help Japan. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of deals we make. And that's why I'm at 40%. The new Gravest poll just came out at yeah. 40%. Would you change that? Would you tell the Japanese that that kind of treaty was on the table if they don't shape up? You'd, you'd consider well, going back why, into that? Why is it, I, I ask you this, why is it that if somebody protect, if somebody hits us, they do not have to come to our aid in any mm -hmm. way, shape, or form? But if they ha get hit, we, we are mandatory, we have to come to their aid. So a lot of your rivals, now, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, sorry, a lot of your rivals in the Republican field, they would look at something like the rise of ISIS, and they would say not only... Um, you know, they should be more frightened of America. That's Obama's fault that they're not frightened of America. But the next thing True. some of them would say is, therefore, it's, you know, unfortunately, regrettably, America is going to have to play the cop again and be the world's policeman and sort out the Middle East. Do you think America has any business sorting out the Middle East? I think we should keep the oil. How do okay. you do that I've without, that. how do, how do you keep, how, how do you keep you the oil? The oil. And who, who, simple. You take it, the oil. There are certain areas which mm -hmm. ISIS has the oil. You take the oil. And how, how do you, you do that? It. Do you have American troops there guarding it? it. Yeah, and and you have American troops? But and yet I get criticized by, by mm -hmm. some people and some people love it. But, but 
But who guards that oil? Who guards that oil? We cannot continue to be a policeman for the rest of the world. We're a Mm -hmm. debtor nation. Mm -hmm. We owe now $19 trillion, and Mm -hmm. it's going to go up very fast, by the way, from this point. Can I just ask who? Almost $19 trillion. We can't be be the policeman for the rest of the, the world. Do you think that just just finally on that oil, who um, who guards that oil? I mean, taking it, would you have American forces on the ground next to those oil yes, fields? I would have American forces guarding the oil. Absolutely, Do nobody's you, going to take it back. And just without on the, our, without our very strong uh, approval, nobody else is taking it back. Do you think that the American people, looking at the last ten years of war in the Middle East, do they think? You know, the Middle East is beyond fixing, that America spent all this blood and treasure and they're still killing each other. No, what, what do you think ISIS they think? ISIS has overplayed and said, you have to understand, I was totally against the war in Iraq. You mm-hmm. can check Reuters, yeah, yeah. July of 04. Yeah, I yeah. was against it. I said, you're going to destabilize. So I am the most militaristic person, but you have to know when to use the military or mm-hmm. have it so strong that nobody's going to mess with you, which is my ultimate goal, to be honest with yeah. you, you know, because our military has uh, been greatly weakened. Yeah by a lot of bad decisions and other things. But anyway, but but I was against the war against with Iraq. Mm-hmm. First of all, they didn't knock down the World Trade Center, okay? Mm-hmm. It wasn't Iraq that knocked down the World Trade Center, mm-hmm. okay? If you look at where the people sent their families, mm-hmm. you know where it was, and yeah, it yeah. wasn't Iraq, okay? Yeah. Okay? So it wasn't Iraq. They didn't, they didn't send their families home to Iraq. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, out of the 18 or so, it, I, I think none went to Iraq, okay? Mm-hmm. So it was not Iraq that knocked down the World Trade Center. Um, I said in 2004, I, I brought that up as a point, but, yeah, yeah. but I said, I said you, in fact, a group was sent to me from the White House to try and talk, because I was getting a lot of publicity that yeah, yeah. you should not, mm-hmm. I seem to get a lot of publicity for whatever reason, mm-hmm. but I said you shouldn't do it. it. It was actually in 2003 I said it, which was early enough, but I said it in 2004, you're going to destabilize the Middle East, Iran is going to take over Iraq, because mm-hmm. these and I said, and somebody else is going to help, and that turned out to be ISIS, okay? I mean, it, it's yeah. an exact – I wish you could read – I'd send you the article if you want it, but it's in it's in, it's in, Reuters in July of 2000. And back in 2004, when you had people making – or 2003, when people were making the case for the war and they said, you know, you can go in and make Western democracies in these countries. We've been dealing with dictators for too long and it didn't help. What, what's your view looking back on whether America should be nation-building – uh, in in these parts of the world, can can you do it? We can you make? Should, we should be building a nation. It should be called the United States of America. That's right. the nation we should be building. We're spending all our money nation building in other places, mm-hmm. and they don't even want us. Okay. Now, with that being said, mm-hmm. we cannot allow. You know, I told you we shouldn't have gone into Iraq. Look, Iraq and Iran would fight for years and years and years, and it mm-hmm. went on forever. They were almost identical strengths. Mm-hmm. And nothing would, the line would never move, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'd go home and they'd rest for 10 years and then they'd start fighting and they'd rest. But that was it. Mm-hmm. We knocked out one of those two pegs. And so now Iran is taking over, I mean, what Iran is going mm-hmm. to do with the money they're getting. And that, that's one another thing. The deal is so stupid. Mm-hmm. Your name is David, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, David, the deal with Iran is so stupid. It's so insanely stupid that when people vote for me, they know I don't make deals like that. Mm-hmm. I get our prisoners back. I don't have 24-day inspection periods. I don't have self-inspection where they inspect themselves. Mm-hmm. I don't have. I don't give them 150 billion dollars that they can use for terrorism all over the world. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do. I I would have doubled and tripled up the sanctions and made a good deal. Would, I like the idea of a deal. Yeah, got to be a good deal. What would so when you say, why yeah. do people like me? Mm-hmm. They like me for reasons like that, because I, I don't make deals like that. I don't make a deal with Sergeant Bergdahl, mm-hmm. where we get Bergdahl, a trader, and they get their mm-hmm. five people that they most wanted, five for one. Can I ask okay. you just a bit about domestic politics? You've been very generous with your time. But just in terms of you've been using this phrase, the, the silent majority, that obviously we heard from President right. Nixon uh, in 69. Are there kind of echoes of that kind of time? Do you think that you're speaking to... Some sort of, you know, that sense of people being angry in the same way? I'll tell you what. I've heard the term, but for the last 20 years, I really haven't heard the term. Mm -hmm. But I went to a rally in Alabama, Mm -hmm. and there were 31,000 people there. You've seen it. Yeah, yeah, huge, yeah. It was the largest, it was the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say in the history of of primaries, because, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about certainly the history of early primaries. That's a lot of people, Before it really starts. 31,000 people. It was going to be in a hotel, 500 people, and then mm-hmm. it turned out to be 10,000 people. And then it turned, So we went from a hotel to a convention center to a football stadium. Mm-hmm. So we had 31,000 people, and it was amazing. And I looked, I said, this is the silent majority. 
Mm -hmm. they weren't silent because they really want to see mm -hmm. proper change, not Obama change. Mm -hmm. And what happened is I, I thought of that. I, I just said the word silent majority. Now, it hasn't been used a in a long time because I guess it's associated somewhat with Nixon. Yeah. But honestly, it's two words that when you put together describe what's happening very mm -hmm. well. There's a group of people that have been uh, great people in this country that have been disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. Their country has been taken away from them. Things have happened uh, having to do with many things, including political correctness, where people are so worried about politically co being politically correct that they're unable to function. Mm -hmm. And with me, hey, look, I'm politically correct. I went to a great school. I was a good student. I mean, like, I'm a smart mm -hmm. I built a great company. Yeah. I did The Art of the Deal, which is the number one selling business book of all time. I did many other bestsellers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did 12 bestsellers. Yeah. I did I, I did The Apprentice. It was one of the most successful television shows yeah. in the last 25 years. Yeah. And, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I'm, but, but the, the word silent majority, the words silent mm -hmm. majority mm -hmm. are very descriptive of what's happening with me. And who are the disenfranchised? What, what forces? Just, just tell me about your coalition. Describe to me who you think, when you look out at these enormous crowds, what is the Trump, the kind of the most well, passionate bit of the Trump coalition? I'm going to go by polls. Uh, a recent poll came out uh, in New Hampshire where I'm 35 percent to mm -hmm. 11 mm -hmm. and nine and three and two and one. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm and don't forget that's with seven. How about getting 35 percent with 17 people? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a very lot of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, for a while they when I started before I announced I was at three percent. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they said, oh, well, that's his cap, 3%. Then I announced I went to 9%, then I went to 18%. Every time I went up, they said, oh, well, that's his cap, that's his mm -hmm. cap. The next week, that's his cap, that's mm -hmm. his cap. Well, then I had 35 percent They said, well, we might as well not say that anymore, because 35, that's an awfully high number. Yeah. But when they did a poll, they were shot, because they thought I'd do well with Tea Party, they thought I'd do well with it. But I do, I do great with Tea Party, I do great with conservatives, I do great with moderates. Mm -hmm. I do great with evangelicals. I do great with everybody. It's across the board. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are most surprised at. It's not just one group. We do great with people across the board, David. And uh, I view that as my, we do great with African Americans mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because they know I'm going to do. And then today we have a poll come out where I actually do great with Hispanics. And is that because... Public policy polling. But all of these people, these different groups, the evangelicals, do they have one thing in common, which is that they have been hurt by some of the forces that have kind of changed America? I mean, who are the well, people... Well, they've been I mean, look at the word... Look at the evangelicals. You can't mm -hmm. even use the word Christmas anymore. Mm -hmm. Macy's doesn't use the word Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, and is I it mean, right... You can't even use the word Christmas anymore. And, and you know, with me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop. Mm -hmm. It's going to stop. And who are the people uh, who've had the... You know, if, if a bunch of people feel they've had a raw deal, who are the people you really look at who've had kind of the rawest of raw deals? I mean, a lot of people well, I say... Think, I, think, I, think, I think hard-working, great people in the United States have been disenfranchised. People... I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. It's always been the way to do it is to work hard, save your money, mm -hmm. put your money in the bank, get interest on your money, and retire wealthy. Mm -hmm. You know... Yeah. At least modestly wealthy, right? Yeah. Well, the people that have done that have been hurt terribly because there's no interest on your money. You get no money. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I just signed for some CDs where you're getting a quarter of 1%. Yeah. A quarter of 1%. Yeah. They don't even want your money, the mm -hmm. banks. So the people that did, did it the way they were supposed to do it, the way they were taught in school, mm -hmm. uh, save your money so that when you retire, you understand. Yeah, yeah. They have nothing. They have nothing. They, they were going to live off the interest of the money. Mm -hmm. They don't have money. Do you think... In, and then on top of it, you had, you know, the, mm -hmm. the problems of nine years ago with the mortgages, so half of the houses have been taken away. Um, the, the many, and by the way, white, black, mm -hmm. Asian, it mm -hmm. covers everybody. Evangelicals, mm -hmm. conservative, yeah. tea parties... Everybody's been hurt by the incompetent way that our government is run. And what, what do you make of the incompetent negotiation? What do you make of the whole debate that you know for the last two three years you've had all the sort of pundits saying very confidently that this election was going to be about inequality, 
And then it turns out that a billionaire can come in and, and sweep the field. What, did they just get that wrong? Well, I they... actually think, see, I actually think it's a great question. I actually think that this election is going to be about competence. Mm-hmm. I'm a very competent person, okay? Mm-hmm. And this election, you know, a woman came up because I, there was a CNN poll yeah. where I lead by, by four times in leadership. I lead on economics, your, your magazine, right? Yeah. I lead on big on finance and economics and the economy. Mm-hmm. Big, big. Like mm-hmm. everyone else is, you know, seven, eight. I was 48, mm-hmm. and they're like, they're like nothing by comparison. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lead on almost every kind. The only one I didn't lead on was sort of like niceness, mm-hmm. and that one I wasn't even close to the top. And I actually said I, I really think I am a nice person, mm-hmm. but I said to the person that's doing it, I was number one in the poll by far. Yeah. But the one weakness I had was nice, and I said, this is not going to be an election on any on niceness. Mm-hmm. This is going to be election on competence. People is it, are is tired, it? and I believe that. I believe more than anything else. Mm-hmm. And part of that goes to it goes to uh, you know what you had just said because those are people that are being disenfranchised. Everything's mm-hmm. being taken away. Is it and going I'm to be a, you, a bit about inequality? Be, I'm sorry. To, inequality is going to be a big issue, mm-hmm. but competence is going to be the biggest issue. They want to see somebody that's. Mm-hmm. Super competent, and that's me. But just on the inequality, you've said some quite tough things. I mean, most recently on, say, Bloomberg uh, TV about um, being willing to look at uh, higher tax rates on things like you know the super rich who are getting all their interest through uh, carried well, interest I didn't say deductions the super and stuff. Rich. I said the hedge fund guys because of the I carried interest deductions. Guys, I know hedge fund guys that are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year who pay no tax. And I want to. I want to have that. I want to lower for the middle income. The middle class in this country has been decimated, mm-hmm. David. Decimated. I know hedge fund guys. They're friends of mine. They pay no tax. They pay very little tax. So would you end the the carried interest uh, deduction? Well, uh, you may have to, and you certainly may have to for certain businesses. As an example, mm-hmm. when a hedge fund guy gets lucky because the market goes up and he's going to make two hundred million dollars, mm-hmm. and and you know two hundred million dollars, and he's going to pay almost no tax. Um, I don't think that's a good thing for the country. And you know, hey, look, they're all supporting Jeb Bush and mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton. Would you be willing to pay more tax? You'd be willing to pay more tax? I don't want their support because I'm totally self-funding my campaign. I don't need anybody's money. It's nice, you know. Uh, But but I'm totally self-funding my campaign. And and the people like that because, Mm -hmm. you know, when they come to me after an election, will you win? And they say, hey, will you keep our taxes low? Or Mm -hmm. will you give us insurance here? Or will you Mm -hmm. do this or that? Or, you know, a thousand different things. Or the lobbyists. I turned down $5 million from a lobbyist who wanted to put up $5 million for my campaign. A, a strong, you know, very strong lobbyist. Would, would, I said, I don't want your money. Would a President Trump start passing lots of laws on campaign finance, or you think the trick is to have a president so rich you just don't need to be bribed? What, but would you try and oh, reform think, the system? I think this. I think you need clarity with financing. I, I do think this. I think that you need clarity. You have to be able to see who's giving. You, you don't even see that anymore. You don't even mm-hmm. see that because mm-hmm. some of these things, they put up money and nobody even knows who they are, where they come from, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you need clarity. You have to be able to see. Uh, I don't like restriction, but I do want clarity. So, did you think Citizens United was a was a was a bad ruling for democracy because of the way that it opened these unlimited? Well, it's not good. It's not good for me because you know these guys are raising a lot of money in uh, in uh, packs and super packs, mm-hmm. and you know, and and although I know a lot of packs have been signed, I know nothing about them, but mm-hmm. I know a lot of packs where people like me so much i understand there's five or six packs that are formed in order to to you know to get in, i'm not involved in as you know you're not mm-hmm. allowed to be involved sure. in them okay. can i ask you about law and but order I know that there have been there have been some packs formed in order to uh, you know they, they call mm-hmm. them like trump packs you know where yeah. people are i don't even know who, i saw on television the other day there were two young guys uh, they formed a, a pack a trump essentially a trump pack they like yeah. trump yeah and, and they find but 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 the truth is I think that if money comes in, you should be able to spend your own money and mm-hmm. do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. But there has to be clarity as to uh, as to who is giving the money. Can I ask you about law and order? You're using uh, law and order a lot. You're talking about the way that the police maybe have not been confident about their encounters with citizens because they're under so much scrutiny. Do you think that explains the rise in murder rates in some big cities? Yes. We have to bring back law and order in this country. And I think the police are phenomenal people. I think there's always bad apples, and I've seen things that I don't like and you don't like. 
but but you, we have to bring back law and order. You have policemen now that are afraid to even talk to anybody because they don't want to lose their job. And how bad is the we situation, have, you think? I think it's very bad. I think when you have Baltimore, which in the first night was practically wiped out or brought back 30 years because the police were instructed to stand down, you can't let that happen. And has Obama used race to, to get involved in that stuff? Totally. I mean, Obama is the great divider. And he has totally used race. And it should have been the other way around. He had an opportunity to unify, and he didn't do that. How, do, how would you describe race relations in 2015 in Obama's America? Uh, almost as bad as they've ever been in the history of the country. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Where do you think it's going wrong? Oh, I mean, you see it. You see it. They're, we're sitting on many ca powder kegs, whether it's uh, uh, Ferguson or St. Louis or, like the other night, or uh, Baltimore or different parts of Chicago. And you think it could, and when you say powder kegs, what, what, what do you think could happen? If well, I think they're powder kegs that are ready to explode. And who's going to be leading the explosion? You think that uh, Af African Americans are ready to explode, or you think... People, people, no, I think, I think various places in this country are ready to explode. Yeah, you, no, you asked about race relations. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think they're very tense. Uh, I think that uh, Obama has divided the country as far as race relations are concerned. And I think that, you know, you have certain sections and, and you have lots of lots of different locations within this country that potentially are powder kicks. What did you think of his speech in Charleston at the church and his whole response to that, uh, the Confederate flag issue and his kind of eulogy for the dead in the church in Charleston? I thought his speech was good. I thought he did. Is that the one where he well, sang? Well, he sang, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a good speech. Were you pleased to see the Confederate flags coming down from some of those flagpoles? Well, a lot of people are, are looking at that as a freedom of expression. Uh, and, you know, I, I hate to do anything that's going to stop or suppress uh, free speech. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you just, uh, you've been very generous with your time, but just one thing that yeah, keeps coming. Go. I'm sure you do. Go. Can I ask you one last question about um, oh, God, sure. So the last several years, we've all seen these primaries from the right where the one thing that seems to count in the conservative movement is purity, purity, purity. Now everyone is kind of scratching their heads because you come along and, you know, you actually, you jump all around the sort of ideological compass because you have an idea that you think makes common sense and it doesn't always be, it's not always the most conservative right-wing position. Are you getting conservative support because they love you on so, some things and are giving you a pass where they... You know, you're not being so conservative, or well, what's you know, going on I'm, with that? I'm, Why are you immune I'm, to this purity test that I'm seems to cause some of the others? The Bible, I'm strongly into the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm strongly into God and religion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pro-life, and you know the different things. But I think they view me um, as somebody that can straighten out the country, mm -hmm. and they view other people as wimps that can't do it. And they look at my track record. I'm, I built up an amazing. I don't know if you look at my filings, but yeah, yeah. most people don't even know how big they are. But, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I built up a net worth of much more than ten billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Net worth. That means net worth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I built a great company. I have some of the most iconic assets. Mm -hmm. You know, like even the Bank of America building in San Francisco. Nobody even knew that until mm -hmm. they saw the filing. Mm -hmm. A big chunk of it. Mm -hmm. The uh, 1290 Avenue of the Americas, Trump Tower, mm -hmm. uh, 40 Wall Street, many, many pieces of land all over the United States in the best locations on rivers, oceans, and lakes, like in mm -hmm. Los Angeles, you know, phenomenal land on the Atlant on the Pacific Ocean. And, yeah. you know, uh, uh, on the on the Potomac River, I have, I have, I have some of the, I own Doral, I own Turnberry in Scotland, mm -hmm. one of the great resorts of the world. Yeah. I own, you know, not just assets. I own the great assets. I mm -hmm. own some of the greatest assets of, in the world. And people see that, and that gives you a lot of credibility. They see, they've seen how I've done. And, and by the way, you, as you know, I've never gone bankrupt or close, but I use the bankruptcy list, but mm -hmm. so does everybody else. And I've used it, you know, very sparingly. You know, I had mm -hmm. hundreds of deals. I used mm -hmm. it four times. It's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I actually did a deal, David. It was interesting. I... I a friend of mine was in trouble. I bought his company for nothing. I called the banks. I said, you want to make a deal? Mm -hmm. Before I made the deal, I said, you want to make a deal? No, I, we don't want to do that, Donald. I knew the banks. I said, you're making a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I then I bought the company. Mm -hmm. I then said, are you sure you don't want to do it? I, I chaptered it. I knocked the hell out of him. Made a great deal out of it. I bought mm -hmm. it for nothing. I made a great deal out of it. But there was an article, oh, Trump went bankrupt. I never went bankrupt. You understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these are, these are legal things. I'm using, yeah. I'm using the laws of the nation to mm -hmm. my benefit, and I should yeah. do that. Yeah. I mean, it's to my benefit. Now, when I'm, if I'm 
running the country, I'll use that same ability that I have because I've always had the ability to make a lot of money. I'm using that. I'll use that same ability mm-hmm. to make our nation rich again because it sounds like not nice. Some people said, "Oh, that's a harsh word, rich." Mm-hmm. Well, until we're rich, you know this better from your magazine. We can't be great until we're rich because. We, right now, we're a debtor nation. Mm-hmm. Our airports are third world. Our highways are falling apart. Our roads, our bridges, everything. Mm-hmm. We're, we're like third world. And when I, when, so, I, when I interview other Republican, your rivals, your other candidates, they, they talk about things like red tape, business regulation. You're talking about much bigger true. stuff. Do you think they're aiming well, too I, small? No, I talk or? about, and, and now, regulation is another thing. I mean, we are being regulated to a point where we can't move. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. But honestly, I think I'm talking about an even bigger picture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's a big thing. I, I, I like the regula- right. you know, regulation also will yeah. get rid of yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, feel uh, well, free if you want. When is the story coming out? Uh, it should be this week, uh, and as far as oh, I know, it's the okay. cover story. So that we don't often do covers of oh, non good. non. Well, leader. I love covers. I love especially. <laughs> it would be an honor on you, especially if you write well. Not at all. You know, I like that. Um, if it's a cover where you write badly, that's even okay. Okay, you have a great magazine. Oh, you're Go kind. Ahead. Anyway, I appreciate Dave. I would appreciate your fairness. I've done a good job. Believe me, we will continue to do a good job. Have a good time. Thanks for calling yourself. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, David. Bye. So there we have it the man who could conceivably become the Republican nominee. To read our piece on Mr. Trump in this week's edition, go to economist.com. In London, this is The Economist. 